Now, nature is not just pretty. I mean, it, with all the flowers and the pretty stuff, uh, we must not forget that nature is uh, pretty forceful and dangerous and brutal. And uh, in 2017, there was this big flood of the Gascony River, if anybody remembers. I think it was the biggest flood they had in a long time. And there was this video of a house that was floating down the Gascony and was sinking uh, further and further down. That was shared on YouTube, so you may have seen that. And this uh, poem, I wrote this after seeing this uh, video. It's called, The Spring Rains Were Relentless. The house struggles to keep its roof above water. The river smashes it into trees. They slash the walls, slice the roof. The house thrashes, rips a telephone pole out by its root, crashes, boards swirl, splinters and brown slush. The round eye of the satellite dish does not blink before drowning. Now there's a place where it's way worse if the flood comes. That is when you're in a slot canyon. Uh, a slot canyon is a narrow canyon, mostly in sandstone, and you find them out in the west, Utah, Arizona, and uh, the, the key word here is narrow. And the walls are steep, so if you're in a slot canyon, you better make sure that there is not uh, rain on the forecast because you cannot get out. So, and sometimes uh, things happen, and this poem is dedicated to the hikers who died in 2015 in Zion National Park in Keyhole Canyon. And that is one of the poems one should actually see on the page, because the way it's typeset is they, all the lines are two syllables. So it's this narrow slot, and, and so you don't hear that, but uh, you can see it on the page. It's called Keyhole. Blue skies, sunny Zion morning, at 2.20 weather warning, flash flood danger, canyons close to travel. Hikers deep in Keyhole Canyon are now out of cell range. Rain and hail slam out of the black, water pours down steep rock walls, falls from all cracks, whirls logs, hurls trees, flood crashes through the narrows. Too much water isn't good, a lack of water isn't good either. I have uh, lived two years in California and we return periodically and as you all know California has been hard hit by a drought and the, uh, the coastal hills they are covered in a plant community that is called chapara and that is very adapted to the dry to the dry climate so all those plants they have very small leaves so to minimize evaporation and those leaves are covered with waxy oily coverings so that they don't lose enough water and these waxy oily coverings they also burn really really well um, chaparral the land sizzles brittle grass yellows the hills live oak draws sparse circles of shade over spiky shrubs Hotkin rustles. The chaparral holds its breath, waits for the spark. Later, in the ash covered ground, seeds waken and stir. So, when I lived there, it was uh, from 1994 through 96, and then we returned for a longer time in 2017 and uh, to see the changes that the drought had caused they were truly heartbreaking so this next poem is called requiem for a eucalyptus grove elwood mesa 1994 the green air tasted of mint the dense canopy dropped shade into the hollow a brown rustle clustered the branches Dead leaves, I thought, until they fluttered orange. Here was the place where the butterflies gather, 10,000 monarchs dreaming winter away in an enchanted forest. Elwood Mesa, 2017. A graveyard of trees of the merciless drought years. Peeled bark curls at the skeleton's feet. Shrill sunlight hits the dust. <laughs> this next poem uh, is the poem 
that is placed uh, almost exactly at the center of the collection and it marks the turning of the arc from uh, processing the loss towards uh, achieving acceptance. And so I'll read you uh, three poems from that part of, of the book. This is called Sea Glass. Your wholeness broken, you became a fragment. Sharp edges speak of loss, cut sleeve scars. Surrender to the endless ocean. Waves toss and roll. Sand grinds the wound, slowly dulling the grief. One day you emerge translucent, smooth and beautiful, frosted with wisdom. I learned to live with the silence. Thoughts echo in the empty house. I transform your room into my space. Place candles and shells on the windowsill. Your books are still on the shelves. Old friends who keep me company and speak of you. So it really took me four years to repurpose my daughter's room. <laughs> While they're in college, you always think, yeah, maybe afterwards, maybe they come back home, but then it gets close to graduation and they actually do get a job and then you know they're, they're, they're not going to come come and move back home. But uh, there's also good parts of the whole empty nest thing because now I have I have room of my own and, and, and where I can write, so this is good. Uh, full circle. We have come full circle. We took out the leaves that extended our table. The small round seats, the two of us like it did 20 years ago. Yeah, I should have said at the beginning, 20 years ago was the last time I gave birth. This book, my, my son just turned 20, this book, giving birth to books, way easier. Way, way, way less so, um, so I read about those wasps. Do you know those paper wasps that make those big nests that hang from the trees and mm -hmm. uh, they look quite formidable? And I read about them. And, I mean, I knew that the, the worker wasp and everybody dies off and it's only the queens that winter. Huh? Imagine, I mean, there's, then comes the spring. The only thing that's there is the queen. So the queen is the only one there. She has to do it all herself. She has to start that entire colony single-handedly, and I thought it was really amazing. So this poem is called Waspness. This is what it means to be queen, to emerge alone from the dark and to start building an empire, relying only on yourself, to wait in solitude, giving food, protection, the warmth of your body, until your first subjects crawl from their cells, ready to feed, fortify, and defend. To withdraw into the inner chambers of your pale paper palace and do what only the queen can do, be the life-giving mother of your tribe. To die at the end of your one-year reign, survived by a dozen daughters, your deserted fortress decaying in the wind.